Hello and welcome. My name is Ioana. I am the editor-in-chief of Descopera.ro, the most important science website in Romania. And today we are joined by NASA expert Tom Stadler to discuss an incredible mission. Seven years ago this month, NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission blasted off to an asteroid named Bennu. Its mission was to collect samples from this asteroid and return them back safely to Earth. This Sunday, the 24th of September 2023, OSIRIS-REx is about to deliver 250 grams of precious cargo. Here to talk about this incredible and exciting um, accomplishment is NASA expert Tom Sattler. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. We're looking forward to a tremendous delivery, our biggest delivery of extraterrestrial material in over 50 years. So I understand that we don't have a lot of time. I'm just going to dive right into the conversation. First of all, why was Bennu chosen for this NASA mission? Well, Bennu is an asteroid, which means that it's a leftover building block from the formation of the planets. That's why asteroids are important. It orbits around the sun the way the Earth does, the way the other planets do. And because it's orbiting in the vicinity of the Earth, it means it's accessible, it's relatively easy to get to. And also, it's a type of asteroid that probably has a lot of water that's locked up in the minerals chemically and a lot of carbon compounds. And we have good reason to think that a lot of maybe all of the water on the surface of the Earth was actually delivered by asteroids carrying water chemically, crashing onto the Earth in its early history, vaporizing and adding that water to our planet. So what can these samples tell us that we don't already know about Bennu, but also about our own solar system? Well, we only know about Bennu from the remote sensing instruments on the spacecraft and what we can learn from, from telescopes on the ground. There is no substitute for actually getting that material into the laboratory and doing a detailed chemical analysis, measuring the, the chemical isotopes, the, the, the isotopes of the, the, uh, the, the different uh, chemical uh, elements uh, in, that, in that asteroid and comparing it with what we have on the Earth, what we know from the samples from the moon, what we have from meteorites. It's that detailed chemical comparison that you can only get by having the stuff there in your hand. So Osiris Rex didn't just collect samples, it also studied Bennu in unprecedented detail. Can you tell me, was there anything about this asteroid that surprised the scientists at NASA? There were a lot of things that were very interesting. We get surprised by every asteroid that we go to because they're not all the same. Every asteroid is carrying a different part of the story of our solar system and how our planets developed. On Bennu, we found that in contrast to the smooth surface we were expecting, there were lots and lots of boulders. And these boulders, even though they looked like boulders, didn't really behave like boulders on the Earth. Some of them seemed to be very, very porous, not very uh, strong in, in consistency. And when we actually touched down to achieve to acquire the sample, some of those boulders were actually crushed by the gentle motion of the sampling mechanism. So what meets the eye is not necessarily what's there on an asteroid, because it's such low gravity, those materials, maybe if you put them on the surface of the Earth, would just crumble under their own weight. It's a really interesting place. That's very interesting. So correct me if I'm wrong with the facts here, but Bennu is a potentially hazardous object with a 1 in 1800 chance of collision with Earth. And the greatest risk is in September of 2182. So why is it That's important? Right. That's right. Perfect. So why is it important for mankind to study such objects and also asteroids in general? Well, most asteroids are not a danger to the Earth at all because they're orbiting the sun, and most of them are orbiting the sun very far away from Earth's orbit. But there are these asteroids like Bennu that are orbiting in our vicinity and that could. Uh, cause uh, an impact on Earth in, in the course of time. And so we want to discover these objects early, we want to track them, and we want to be able to predict which ones could be a danger. Now, just this coming Tuesday, we're coming up on the one year anniversary of the DART experiment, the double asteroid redirection test, where we demonstrated by crashing a spacecraft intentionally into an asteroid, we have the ability to change its course. And so this is the kind of thing that we might be able to do in the future if we ever discover an asteroid that is heading toward us, to push it off and avoid that collision. Bennu is not a danger to us right now, and we don't know of any asteroid that is a danger to us right now, but we want to be able to develop that opportunity. And having the OSIRIS-REx spacecraft there at that asteroid to study it in detail gives us a lot more important information in case we ever have to do anything about it. So NASA has stated that it will share some of its samples with other space agencies around the world for research purposes, of course, such as Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. 
Um, so when can we expect the first results from these samples to be made public? Well, the very first examination of the sample is going to be happening as soon as the, uh, the samples get to the curation facility at Johnson Space Center uh, later this month. Uh, in the beginning of October, the team will have its first chance to examine and just get the very first sense of what's there. And so we expect to be able to say a few things about the sample uh, within a few weeks. But that detailed analysis of really what is what the chemical makeup is of those samples is going to take uh, months and years. And so everybody should just watch for, uh, for news uh, releases coming from the science team in the months ahead. Of course. So a while back, there was a story in the news about how Brian May, famous guitarist for legendary rock band Queen and also astrophysicist, helped the OSIRIS-REx mission teams. Basically, May created 3D images so that scientists can um, pick the best landing spots on Bennu. Can you tell me more about that, how that collaboration came to be? Um, I don't really know how that came to be, actually. Uh, Brian May has been uh, an active participant in some of our missions, and particularly OSIRIS-REx, for a while. He's got an ability. He has a degree in astrophysics, has a doctorate in astrophysics. And uh, his particular specialty is uh, turning uh, spacecraft images into stereoscopic vision to enable you to really understand uh, what was there. So I think his contribution was really uh, very, uh, a really great contribution to understanding the surface and being able to pick where the safest sites would be to do the touchdown and do the sample collection. Yes, and at that time, Brian May stated that a mission like this one is incredible, and if we can understand asteroids, then we can understand ourselves. Is that accurate? We're learning a lot about ourselves because what we really want to understand is how our Earth came to be the way it is and what hap had to happen on the Earth in order to make it into a place where life could develop. The indications are that the water on the Earth may have come from asteroids. And so if there's really a connection between the water in our bodies and water that's locked up chemically in a dark rock from space that crashed onto the Earth four billion years ago, then that tells us something profound about what we are and what our relationship is to our planet and to the cosmos. Exactly. Um, so tell me, where and how can our readers watch the return of the sample this Sunday, this is September the 24th? Well, it's all going to be live streamed on uh, nasa.gov, www.nasa.gov, and on NASA TV, and on social media, at NASA. Uh, the uh, uh, sample capsule landing is at 8.55 in the morning in Mountain Time. That's uh, in the state of Utah in the US. Uh, the uh, broadcast starts at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. And so everybody in the world is welcome and invited to watch. And just one last question, because I know we are approaching the end of our time today. After the successful delivery of the samples, what's next for OSIRIS-REx? OSIRIS-REx is going to divert, do an Earth gravity assist, and set up for a rendezvous with the asteroid Apophis in 2029. And later this year, we've got other asteroid missions uh, doing great things. The Psyche mission is going to launch uh, on the 5th of October, and the Lucy mission that's en route <coughs> excuse me, to the Trojan asteroids out of the distance of Jupiter is going to have its first asteroid encounter in the main belt on October 1st. So it's asteroid autumn at NASA, a lot of things coming up. Yes, and it seems that the fun never stops at NASA. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Fingers crossed that everything goes according to plan, and we will be soon able to find out what's hiding beneath Bennu's surface. Thank you again, and good luck to all the teams at NASA. Thanks very much.